Hi everyone, Ned here from Drive EV and welcome to the workshop. Uh, Jay's just shown up to come and have a look and see what we're up to. So we're midway in repair of a Tesla Model S battery pack. This one's come in to us from a customer who took the car to Tesla because the car wouldn't drive anymore and they wanted to replace the whole battery for 30 grand and we've told them that we'd have a look at it for them and see what was going on. Turns out that while we were figuring out what was going on that uh, just one of the cells was reading a bit low so we replaced, we ordered a replacement module which is a lot cheaper than a whole new $30,000 battery and we're just midway repairing that now. We started off by removing the lid so we could get access to it. These lids are supposed to be sort of one use but we uh, took, our, took our best care, removed the lid off it and actually took it to the panel beater down the road for them to smooth anything back out that we may have dented and damaged a little bit and now we're just removing the glue off all the sides so we can glue it all back together properly. This is the module that needed to be replaced and it simply unbolts and has a couple of coolant lines that come off and the whole module just pops right out of place and goes right back in and there's a single connector that goes back to the uh, battery management system. And here's a big empty space where I'm currently storing all of my nuts and bolts but in the bigger battery versions this would actually have two more modules in it so if you have an 85 kilowatt hour pack or bigger there would be two more modules stacked up in here and this is in the front of the car there's a little bulgy cover that goes over and protects everything oh how about while I'm here we also we just quickly talk about maybe the cooling quick disconnect yep. so on the front we also have the cooling quick quick disconnect sorry so this was originally made because Tesla wanted to be able to remove the packs out of the car and do a swap of the battery pack rather than having to charge them so everything on this car is a quick disconnect so this is where the cooling connects to uh, and just for anyone playing around at home don't lick the blue juice it's really gross and it takes about a week to get off your tongue and then moving down to the other side of the battery over here uh, we've taped them up but this is where the 12 volt and data connections are to the car also quick disconnect and this is where the DC connection is that connects to the car for making the wheels go round and round. Inside there we have the master sort of BMS. So this talks to all of the individual BMS modules on all of the modules in here. And this will figure out what's going on with the battery and keep everyone happy and send it back to the car to let it know what's going on. And then underneath there we've got a couple of contactors that will disconnect the high voltage connection from the car when it's turned off or in an emergency. So when this car came to us it was completely dead. The customer was trying to use it. I think he, believe he was trying to charge it uh, but it wouldn't charge uh, because it had a fault internally so the car wasn't happy to turn on the main contactors and connect it to the rest of the car which meant that the 12 volt was no longer being supported and the, the car being as power hungry as it is drained the 12 volt pretty quickly uh, so it was completely dead when the customer got back to it and tried to jump start it to charge it and it wouldn't work and um, yeah eventually gave up and called us and got it here on a tow truck. So here we have the two different modules. This is the one that came out of the car. And as you can see, there's a few cells missing inside the module. And that's how they were able to make a smaller capacity pack for less money versus this one where you can see all of the modules are actually in there. So all of these 18650s are in there, but this one actually also came from a 60 kilowatt hour pack, but these were software limited by Tesla. So they're actually capable of 70 kilowatt hours and software limited to 60. Whereas these are really only 60 because they just have less cells in them. Here on these modules on the front of it, we've got the BMS, which is the battery management system. And that takes care of measuring all the individual cell voltages of the battery. And then it sends that onto the main control unit to figure out what all the cells are doing. So the issue with this one was is that uh, if you see on this one, you may be able to see if you zoom in, there's a couple of capacitors on there that have blown. We can include some nicer photos in a minute. And that has gone haywire. So the car thought that one of the cells inside the battery was at 1.5 volts, when in reality it was at 3.7. So we've replaced the BMS on this unit and now we can put the module back in the car and get the car back together. Yeah, Tesla's without a battery. Look pretty much like Tesla's with a battery, but with more headroom.
should we do for next week, Ned? You're gonna put you're gonna put a what in a what? That's the story. <laughs>